continue now the previous uh, tutorial, starting with the basic functions to record the presets in a, into a sequence. And now we will get into uh, more uh, detailed things, and especially everything about timing. So we first saw how to very simply enter some levels here in this uh, grid directly in the in and out uh, timing but we will see now uh, more functions so for example uh, let's say we would like to adjust the timing for, for the first queue uh, we go on this first queue on stage and now we can modify so if we don't want to use the first uh, way we saw last time to enter times here. Uh, another very quick way is to do it from the console and it's uh, pretty easy. So for example I want to uh, up time uh, for this particular queue and I want it to uh, let's say uh, 9 seconds for example for on this first step. So, on my console, I press 9 and then I press together time and B or in. And you see that's directly written here. So, that's the other way to do it directly from the console. If I want to change the out time, I can do the same thing saying for example 4 on my console and together time and A or out. And you see this time is displayed here. Well, now let's go into a particular timing like channel timing. From now, if I run this queue, I can see all my channels moving at the same speed because they are all uh, related to the queue time, to the step time, actually. So now, if I want, uh, for example, channel 7 has a different speed, I can give it a special time. A channel time. So to do it I just select channel 7 and say now I press for example one second so one on my console and this time instead of time I press together time and channel. Doing that, you will see now appearing a small arrow to show that there is a, a nothing inside embedded in this step and it has automatically created a part fade. And this part fade contains channel 7 with a time of 1 second. So let's try now to see how it works. I press go and I can see my channel 7 going very fast. Okay, this is for the channel time. If you want to do it from the uh, graphic interface, you could, for example, take the channel 5 and drag and drop it on the sequence step here and you choose create new part fade. It will add a second line for this part fade where you can see our channel 5 here and you can just enter as we already saw the special timing for this one. So let's say we wanted to get it uh, up cut so point 0.1 enter and let's check the result now I press go and we should see my channel 5 
directly coming up the cut channel 7 very fast and the last one in a longer time so you can do it with both ways as you prefer okay so now let's talk about the uh, different timings we can have on uh, one step uh, I move to step 2 now all my channels go to 50 and I would like this uh, step starting automatically after the end of the step one. To do that, I can use the wait function. The wait function tells the system that the step will be executed after a time from the start of the previous one. Uh, let's a look to a small uh, diagram which will show you better. So here if we have a look to what is happening, um, as you can see the wait time is here. This wait time define how long my step one will stay on stage before the next step will be run. So if we want to try that, um, so let's say I have, okay, maybe we could put a shorter time here to not wait too long. So let's say uh, three seconds, for example, but don't forget that we have some special time here. Uh, so maybe we can remove this part fade now because we don't need them anymore. Okay. So now all my channels will move in uh, three seconds from zero to uh, their uh, recorded value. And then I would like this uh, channel stay on stage for two seconds and then start automatically the next step. So to do that, I have just to enter is here in the wait time the value I want. This first queue will wait before the second one will be run. So let's say two seconds here and let's start from the beginning. So now I press go and I run my queue, then my wait time and then automatically the second step is run to his uh, recorded values. So this is the wait time. If you want to remove the wait time because you don't need need it anymore or you don't want this queue to be run automatically after the third step, you just press zero on your keyboard and enter. And uh, zero is uh, sorry. zero is not a value, zero is to say, uh, to tell the system that there is no more wait time at all. Well, now let's talk about the delay. The delay is the time between the uh, actual go and the actual start of the uh, fade. Let's have a look to our uh, diagram. Look here what's the delay in, for example. Um, the delay in is the time from the go to the uh, actual beginning of my queue. So as you can see, when I will press go at this time, I will have to wait all this delay in time before my channels will start to move. And at the same for the delay out, here uh, I will have a smaller delay out, so when I press go of this queue, I will have to wait this delay out time before my channels go down to zero. So let's check that. Um, so let's do it with the uh, console way. 
so that's quite easy as well. For the delay in, that's quite the same as for the fade time. You press first the number, the value you need. So let's say two seconds, so I press two on my console. And then I press uh, the delay key on my console. If I want a special delay in, for example, I will press together delay and B or in, depending on the uh, key name. Check first before doing that that in your setup preference, if you go into um, playback, check that this here is well set as you need because as you can see here it can be fixed to A or fixed to B or active and active is probably the uh, most convenient way because you can decide at any time on which part of the uh, playback you will change the time you can change to A or B if it's fixed to A, it will always be related to A, and the same for B. So active is more flexible because you choose at any time, on the fly, how you want your time uh, will be applied. So uh, here we are on uh, active, so we are on A, um, and we have already set this time uh, to two seconds and then the delay out here to four seconds um, okay except that it doesn't make sense in this example because if I remember there is no channels uh, going down so maybe we should avoid that and put a delay out here because here we have some channels going to zero so let's say two seconds for example okay so now let's go back to zero I have my first queue running I have no more wait time so now I have to press go again to run the second step uh, in the second step look at the uh, how the channels start to rise up nothing 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 happened and now after two seconds of delay they go up they start to go up to the value and again if I press go you will see now that nothing happens on these ones and after two seconds the delay down execute the uh, rest uh, of the queue so the delay is quite simple it's the time between the actual go on the console and the actual uh, starts of the uh, transition. We have talked about weight, but um, if we look again to our diagram, uh, as you saw, weight here is the time between the end of the fade and the start of the next queue. But you could also ask for a weight which could include this fade time, such that it's included in, in, in the calculation. And in this case, if it's what we call here a follow, follow means that this wait time will be calculated between the start, the go, the real go, and the go, virtual go, of the next step. So let's try to see what's happening there. Uh, we will put uh, a wait time, let's say, on the uh, third one, and we will say, okay, the previous one has two delay plus uh, four in, which is which makes six seconds. So if I want to keep my uh, Q2, let's say, two seconds on stage, I will have to add two seconds to that amount here. 
because if you remember, let's have a look again, it will include this time. So when you use the follow mode, you have to think of the time it takes to reach your final levels plus the time you want to keep it on stage before the next queue is executed. So in our case there is something more because there is a delay on, on, on the up time so we have to include also this delay. If we were calculating from let's say this step here to, to get the follow we will have to include this delay plus the up time plus the time we want to keep it on stage which is our case here. So let's say that we have so 2 plus 4 that's 6 we wanted to keep it on stage 2 seconds plus 2 that's 8 seconds. So we will put 8 seconds here and we will change here into the follow mode. Let's have a look to what's happening. I run my first queue, uh, which is actually on stage for a part, and then my wait time of two seconds, the delay starting, and that's it. So that's pretty easy, as you can see, to change very uh, quickly the way your uh, steps uh, scroll on. Um, just take care that if you are uh, working on uh, a show which has been uh, imported from uh, another console, uh, depending on which one it is, it can change a little bit uh, the way it will work. So probably you could have to change something, especially because a lot of consoles uh, use the weight uh, in the follow mode by default and in this case that means that the calculation of the time is not the same as the weight we have here which means that in the wait time you will get from this other consoles uh, this time will be this one and if you use your weight here in this system this weight will be this one so uh, this time could be uh, will have probably to be uh, changed, to be adapted to uh, uh, this uh, show file. Okay, this is for the time. Um, just let me now show you a couple of tricks which are really, really useful and, uh, and, and fast. You just select a channel, give a value, and drag and drop this channel onto your step. And here you have a context uh, menu where you can decide to do a lot of different things and you can replace intensities uh, in which this uh, channel 25 will replace all everything which is already in your queue or you can merge and in this case this channel will be added or modified if it's already in this queue and at last you can remove intensity if this channel is has a value in, in, in this queue. So let's say we choose merge to add this uh, channel to this step. And uh, let's have a look now. Edit uh, sequence step. And we have now uh, our channel 25 uh, dropped into this uh, sequence. The sequence steps can also be moved, uh, moved, moved back and forth. Uh, so for example, you can click on the, this step and decide to put it as uh, the first one. And you choose move. And in this case, we will see these details later for the uh, parameters. Um, and, and now you see that my third queue is now at the first place and I have because I have choose move but if I want to use this uh, 
step several times uh, in my sequence. I have just to click on it, go where I want and this time to copy it. And now I have two times I'm using the same preset two times in my sequence which is really really practical when you have always the same effect to be run uh, a couple of times in your sequence. And the last trick we will, sh we will see on, uh, in, in this tutorial is a, a very nice feature uh, to see how your channels are uh, moving from one state to, to, to the other. And for example, you can click here and drag and drop it on, the, on any other presets and you release and it will give you um, a nice display of how things are changing between your two uh, steps. So here you can see A is uh, the preset 79 and B is 80 and we can see here what are the difference is the differences be between uh, the uh, preset 79 and the preset 80 we can see that for example channel 5 which is in at 50 in uh, this queue is uh, dimmed down at 0 in, in this one and, and so on so you can easily see which ones are changing because this is the current choice but here you can say you oh, see I would like to see which ones are the same in both uh, queues so you choose A equal B and I can see all the channels which have no change between uh, those two states and uh, if I want to see which ones are for example are changing uh, are uh, have a growing uh, level I can see here what is uh, going from a level to zero or I can get the inverse here something that I see that the 25 goes from zero to, uh, to 40 and at the end you can choose eventually to apply uh, this change to both of your uh, steps. So, so for example, it, it, I see that here in, in my Q79 and Q80 there are different levels and I would like to get them the same. So it can be the same as it is in this one or the same as it is in this one. So you can choose here between copy A to B or copy B to A, knowing that A is the second Q and 80 is so if I want for example that, uh, that channel here uh, 80 is already at 40% in the previous queue which is not the case right now uh, I have just to say I want to copy B to A and yes and now if I want to check my preset 79 I will find a new channel which was not before so that's a very very nice feature because it lets you see very quickly what is changing between two states and it can be any state not uh, consecutive ones I could have taken this one and, uh, and drag it uh, much further in, in, in my sequence and, uh, and then decide if you want to uh, uh, get them matching exactly the same levels. So uh, I let you try these uh, features and we will have a next uh, tutorial on uh, different things into uh, presets. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.